Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on this misly morning. It's lovely to see you all. We'll be led through our service by Jean. Thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And another welcome from me. And we're going to begin our service this morning by singing our first hymn, Morning Has Broken. <laughs> anything we need to say a particular sorry for before we say the confession together. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sin and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the collect the special prayer for today together. Almighty God, in whose service lies perfect freedom, Teach us to obey you with loving hearts and steadfast wills, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our first reading. Well, the first reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through to 10. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in the matters related to God and to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, 
since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor upon himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, Whoever wants to become great among you must be our servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Christ. Heavenly Father, may my words be your words, and may your words reach deep into each of our hearts. In the name of the living word, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. What Peter has just read in that passage from Mark brings us to the very heart of the Gospel. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yet the disciples at that time were unable to grasp it. Jesus had been, been preparing the disciples for his impending death and resurrection, warning them about the things that were going to happen. James and John then went to Jesus, asking him for the privilege of being able to sit at either side of him in his glory. When the other disciples heard about their request, they were, understandably, I think, up in arms about it. They probably felt that James and John were getting a bit above themselves, a bit too big for their sandals. 
We don't know the reasons behind James and John's request. They may have felt that because they had grown so close to Jesus, they wanted to remain close to him forever. But of course, as Jesus pointed out, they didn't know just what they were really asking. I can imagine Jesus shaking his head in disbelief that they still had not grasped the full significance of what he had been telling them. But what loving patience he demonstrated. It's a bit like the situation when the disciples argued over which of them was the greatest that we looked at last month. In many organizations, what James and John were asking would seem perfectly natural. As fishermen, they had come from a relatively humble background and moved into positions of authority. And with such positions, they could perhaps expect to have some enjoyment of privilege. In their travels with Jesus, they had endured many hardships and worked at understanding his mission. Surely they had earned their positions of leadership. And no doubt their intention would have been to use such positions well. But Jesus would not allow it. Christianity is not like any other organization. Its leaders are not to lord it over other members. In fact, it's quite the reverse. Those who hold positions of leadership are to set an example of humble service, following the example of Jesus himself, as pointed out by the writer of the letter to the Hebrews in our first reading. In this country, we have, to my personal knowledge because of my involvement with them, two organisations based on this example of Christian teaching the Armed Forces and the National Health Service. The Armed Forces, as I know from my own experience as a serving member of the Women's Royal Air Force, and also more recently as a chaplain to the local Air Training Corps, has a strong Christian ethos. Servicemen and women are accountable to God, the Queen, and the country in that order as sworn by an oath of allegiance made on enrolment. And the National Health Service is available to all without, except, without discrimination. There are, of course, other organizations with similar Christian foundations, for example, the civil service and the emergency services. The lesson of humble service is not easy to abide by. It's as difficult for us now as it was for the disciples in the time of Jesus' earthly ministry. We all find it hard to live without some sort of structure and hierarchy. And if we're honest, many of us enjoy our own little bit of importance and like to be respected by others. That respect, of course, has to be earned. And we work hard for recognition and we enjoy receiving our due reward. It's not too difficult to see that an attitude of service modelled on that of Jesus would transform all relationships, from family life through to international situations. In fact, it would transform the world. But only God can bring about such transformation. That does not, though, give us the excuse that we should not try to follow Jesus' example. Just think how many quarrels would be avoided, how many complicated situations overcome if everyone adopted such an attitude. It's easier said than done, though. Following Jesus' example presents us with difficulties. Are we willing to mix with people we may not really like? To listen to other people's opinion, especially when it differs to ours? Or to wash the feet of other people like Jesus did? 
Jesus came to live on earth to show us what God is like. But I wonder if we sometimes take this too far. By seeing him as human, do we try to bring him down to our level, forgetting that he is also divine? Visualizing God as the all-powerful creator of the world is far harder and more complex than seeing him as a human being. The other day, as I was driving along with the sun shining on the trees in all their autumn splendor, I couldn't help reflecting on the wonder and the beauty of creation and how fortunate I am to live in such a place that's a beautiful area, to live in freedom and in peace. It could so easily be different. Imagine if we had been born and brought up somewhere else, for example, in the Middle East, in Ukraine or Afghanistan. What a difference that would make to our lives. These thoughts once again reminded me how easy it is to take all that I have for granted and how important it is to set aside time to worship God, to really bow down and worship him, to truly thank him for all he has done, not only for his wonderful creation, but what God has done for each one of us because he loves us all so much that he was prepared to send his son to live on earth, who in turn was willing to die in such a horrific way so that we would be freed from our sins and be given the promise of eternal life. It's all such a mystery, really. Unfortunately, by trying to work out the mystery, trying to discover the meaning, we can sometimes lose that sense of awe and wonder. We don't really need to work it out. All we need to do is accept it and offer God our grateful thanks in praise and adoration. The message in our readings today is about that humble obedience which so often comes through suffering and persevering when the going gets tough, but eventually makes us wise enough to listen to that inner voice which tells us what is really important. Amen. Amen. So now let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <coughs> Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord of the Father. Amen. And now Janet's going to bring forward the pebble. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we do ask your blessing on all those people who are represented here in this pebble pool this morning by these pebbles. Whatever their needs, Lord, we pray that you will hear them and heal them. And we thank you for those who took the trouble to bring them to, to here. 
to put them here. Please bless them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now Sue's going to lead us in our prayers. The response to Lord have mercy is hear our prayers. Now as the world rolls on its restless way, O Lord, we pray for kings and queens and presidents, for governors and governments, all ministers and cabinets, all people in authority, that when they make decisions which affect the lives of millions, they may be endowed with wisdom and their hearts moved with compassion as they seek a world where justice is applied with proper mercy, where the people enjoy freedom yet accept responsibility, a world of peace and harmony, a world of joy and charity. Lord, Use our human skills of hand and brain to feed the hungry mouths and hungry minds, to heal the sick and educate the young, to cultivate the land and build safe homes, to raise the poor from drudgery and want, to make, to mine, to transport and to sell with energy, integrity and care. Help us protect this green oasis world, that all may share its beauty and its wealth, including generations yet to be. We pray for the places in the world where human conflict is rife. The Middle East, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Niger, Burkina Faso, Sudan, Mexican drug wars, and the Russian-Ukrainian war. May ways to peace come. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord, for your church in every place on earth, we bring our prayers in fellowship and love. May those who lead by fa be faithful to their call and use their power to build up and to serve. May those who preach be faithful to your truth and spread the light of Christ in word and life. Give patience when the gospel is not heard. Give strength to those who face a hostile world. Give hope where failure overrules success and humble awe when thousands crowd your gates. And in this church, forgive us when we fall through lack of faith or worse still, lack of love. Teach us the art of gentle sympathy and offering friendship that is truly meant. Show us the needs of this community and help us to respond in prayer and deed. Then may our worship overflow with joy, delighting in your presence and your will. We pray for those that have been discerning whether to apply for the position of vicar at St Hugh's and for those that will have the decision of choosing our new priest. May your will be done, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayers for those who suffer, those we know, whose names we whisper in our inner heart's devotion, and all those whose names we know not, but whose pain and grief and troubles are already felt in heaven. Wipe away all tears, our Father. Lift the downcast.
heal the wounded. Comfort all the broken-hearted with the hope that this life's anguish can bear fruit in finer spirits, seeking an eternal kingdom. In silence, lift those you know that are in need of the Lord's healing powers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, receive our prayers and longings. All our cares we cast upon you, trusting in your love and mercy. For the sake of Christ, your Son. Amen. The fruit of God's Spirit is love and joy and peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Shall we wave? Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join your eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, in times of praise, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. <clears throat> Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come Just 
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God.
We thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep you in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love, today and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn is at the name of Jesus. Just as you are 